We're a minute into the game here at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. Jim Nance and Billy Packer and the Yukon Huskies today playing for a piece of the regular season title championship with the Pittsburgh Panthers taking on the defending national champion Syracuse Orangemen have scored the first four. Josh Boone taken out after one minute and one second for not playing defense on Warwick. And here's Emeka Okafor very questionable in the warmups whether he could go today. Very tender situation. His lower back has plagued him since the third game of the season. And there's Okafor going up with the rebound and heading to the line. The UConn Huskies, yes, they make an early change. They take Boone out. He collected a foul, leading to two free throws. Boone is uh, off the floor now. Villanueva has taken his place. Fourth, Warwick, Nichols, Pace, and Jerry McNamara, who scored the game's opening basket. Fourth called for the foul. Here is Emeka Okafor, perhaps the national player of the year. Well, the only area in which he's not the national player of the year, Jim, is the foul line, shooting 51% from the line. A problem, probably the only problem as a team that Connecticut has as well. 0 for 2 here. Okafer went through limited warm up duty today, and uh, we really didn't know until the five minutes before tip whether he would attempt to play. Jim, I don't think he's going to play much today. I really don't. I mean, he is really tender in that back area. He's not running up and down the court very much. Pace, you followed up, no good. You notice there he didn't even go into traffic for that rebound very much unlike him. Nichols almost had the big dunk on the follow up inside to Lee Brown and moving around Villanueva the freshman lays it in. Beautiful drive by Villanueva. Now Connecticut has already beaten Syracuse once this year 84 56. They didn't just beat them. No, they, they just manhandled them. Gave the Orangemen their worst loss in Big East. History. And with the exception of Warwick, who had 26 points and 11 rebounds in that game, everybody else from Syracuse just faded out. Warwick has four at the start of this one. 6 2 Syracuse. That was back February 2nd at the Hartford Civic Center. And at that point, the Orangemen were in the throes of a big slump, losing four out of five, back getting blown out on a couple of them. But they have come back big now. Brown with the jumper as the Orangemen. Approach March Madness. 
They've big, won four straight coming into this one. Big shot by Brown right there is an outstanding shooter, but he's been a streak shooter this year. Nowhere near as consistent as what was expected of him. Fourth had a beautiful assist to open up this game. Found McNamara free down low for the layup. Warren challenging Villanueva to kick it out and it's taken away. Oh, right back, here comes Pace. Thanks at home. Pace is so good at that little one-hand left-handed shot of his. He just glides to the basket, never shoots the traditional jump shot, but he can make that lead. It. Outside Brown with a three. Going away the tip twice. Forrest pulls it down. I wonder how long Jim Calhoun is going to go with Okafor, Jim. He's not getting in any of the traffic. Very much unlike it. Villanueva with the foul right there. Got him on the hand. Seton Hall has just gone final, defeating Rutgers. So here's the situation for Syracuse. If it wins today, it'll get a first round bye in the Big East tournament this week in New York. Should it lose, though, should Syracuse lose, it would drop back to the five seed and have to play on Wednesday against Georgetown. So a win today and a bye to Thursday. Syracuse with a loss though moves on to a Wednesday afternoon game a game against Georgetown from UConn perspective again playing for a piece of the Big East regular season title and locked in as the two seed in the tournament this week regardless of the outcome of this one. There's that two three zone that Syracuse uses so well they practiced I'd say a third of the time as a team yesterday working on the spacing of their zone. And Gordon penetrated way too strong with the shot. McNamara forces it up. Court and the pace as they whip it around. Warren Okafor tries for the block. Certainly impacted the shot. He sure did. Okafor did an excellent job that time positioning. Brown tries to get it inside. Okafor wasn't ready for it. Okafor is playing at about 50% efficiency with that back problem. And it looks at, at best. Yep. Warwick with six, early going, Orange by six. Okay, folks, let's take a look at the singular one-on-one -on -one with Billy Packer Trivia Challenge. Who holds Connecticut's NCAA tournament record for most points in a game with 36? Karan Butler, Richard Hamilton, Ray Allen send a text message to 26222. You can win a trip to the Final Four. I know one thing, Jim, you'd like to have any one of those three on the floor for you if you need some points, would you? No, no question. This was during the timeout. Okafor never didn't sat even down. join the huddle. Yep, he and never he sat down. Stays on the floor, Billy, and Brown hits the roll inside. And you notice there, Okafor pulled out from underneath the basket as Brown drove to the basket. Uh, as I said before, and Jim, you may be right, nowhere near 50% even. I think he's, about, he's just on the floor as a body. I don't understand it. This man's not just a body. Warwick has been outstanding early in his ball game. Nichols with the shot. And fourth slams it home again. Where was I left Okafor? I think, I think Jim Calhoun will make a move here very shortly. Okafor didn't even go in the traffic. It's Okafor missing the short shot. Tipped up and in. Villanueva with his second basket. Anderson ready to come into ball game. Villanueva may be the guy that's going to be playing in the center now. It'll be very good experience for him in a game like this. If you Calhoun, Coach Calhoun, you got to start wondering. This has been plaguing Omeka Okafor since the third game of the season. Sacred Heart was the opponent. Right. Had hurt in the second half. Played in the Georgia Tech game, but wasn't effective in that game where Tech blew out Connecticut. In the guard, there's Warwick going up over Villanueva. That was in the NIT semis, and there's Gilmerick giving it up, and Forrest delivers. What a pass. No weak side help, and I think, Jim, right now, Okafor's condition is affecting his teammates because he's not the normal player they expect in there, and he takes up so much room in the paint, both offensively and defensively, they don't know how to adjust to it. And Gordon missing from the outside. Last touch by Okafor. This is during pregame. Okafor was late arriving out on the floor, getting stretched out in the locker room and uh, getting constant attention and help. 
Trying to stretch out that lower back. He stays on the floor, though, again. I think it would be a good idea if you're fourth to set screens on him. Try to get your body on him as much as possible. Really challenged to see whether he can stay in there. Anderson comes in for Talik Brown. Anderson's been a Syracuse killer the last uh, two years. Last touch by Ben Gordon. So I got to give you one of the craziest stats we got to these two teams. In regard to the starters, fourth is 0 for 4 against Connecticut. McNamara has only scored 15 points between the three starters. Fourth pace of McNamara, they're 5 for 46 career against Connecticut. Not very good. Well, as before today, Fort's already made a couple of baskets outside Nichols and the shot clock violation. Had to put it up. The other ball had not touched the rim. Josh Boone coming back onto the floor, and this time Emeka will head to the bench. Now let's see if he sits down or whether he merely goes to the locker room to stretch, because he did not want to sit down during that timeout. He's just standing. And he's going to check back into the game. The next dead ball. With it inside, what a pass, Gordon to Villanueva. And how about the catch, too? Villanueva has tremendous hands. Gordon probably throws the ball off the dribble as well as any guard in the country. Six points for the freshman. Don't see a lot of intensity out there today, though, on the defensive end from Connecticut. Kind of surprising, because they are an outstanding defensive club. Warwick travel. Boone comes right back out. Second time he replaced and Okafor returns. That must have been just a little conversation over there between coach and star player. Asking him, can he continue to go? A little adjustment here. Shirt outside. Pants coming down. A little wardrobe malfunction. Yep. Jim Calhoun, he is a nominee for this year's uh, Hall of Fame class, one of the finalists, one of the last 16. 14 of 18 years at Connecticut, 20 wins or more. Right into the game and the rebound for Terrence Roberts. McNamara drives, dishes, four, oh, not a third time. Good finish by Fourth, who had problems against Pitt last week, taking it inside. He gets that very tough interior defense that Pittsburgh throws at you. You're talking about how Fourth had not made a field goal against Connecticut. First one. Already three in this one. Outside Villanueva with a three-pointer. There's that versatility. We saw Villanueva on the catch inside and then steps outside. Leading the charges for the Huskies with nine of their 13. Jim, you talked about Fourth. You can just see the difference. And there's going to be an offensive foul on Warwick pushing his way through the crowd. But fourth can tell, Jim, that it's not the same Okafor that he'd normally be playing against. Warwick says, wait a minute, what did I do? Fourth with six points, four rebounds. Orangeman, front. CBS Sports College Basketball Coverage is sponsored by the new Chevrolets. Ten new cars and trucks in 20 months. An American revolution. Microsoft, your potential, our passion. And by Michelin because so much is riding on your tires. Back on campus at Syracuse, over 30,000 on hand. In fact, we could be watching a record right here for the on-campus attendance record of the college basketball game all time. Watching it fill up, the record was last year's last home game, Carmelo Anthony's last home game, 33,071. We won't know until the second half. Suspicions are they'll top it today. What's interesting about that, no one knew at that time that Syracuse was going to be the national champion. That was just an outpouring of interest in upstate New York for basketball. And from the corner, Anderson off the mark. Villanueva plucks it out of the air and banks it home. He's got 11. Young man having a huge game here. First game, he had 12 points, nine rebounds, almost topping that total already, Jim. And another whistle, Billy, away from the ball. This one's called on Sir, um, uh, Connecticut. 
I don't see the defensive intensity. Fourth goes out, gets a big hand, gets off to a good offensive start, realizing Okafor not the shot blocker that we normally see because of his physical condition. Rashad Anderson called for that. Jeremy McNeil, the senior who was honored before the game here on senior day, comes in for fourth in the Syracuse lineup. There he is. Young man from San Antonio. Would he love to help his team go back to his home? The repeat final four for the Orange. McNamara missing the jumper, and there's Okafor with a rebound. A rebound, but doesn't get down the court very well. Beautiful pass. Villanueva steps back three. Oh! In and out, Roberts. Was it really ready to shoot? I think he was surprised at how open he was. Pace looking for a seam. Puts it up, it's never pretty, but too strong. Out with it, then and Brown. Great thing to do against that zone. Beat it down floor, be ready to score before they set up. He's going away, but battling with Roberts. Over to Anderson, hits the baseliner. Rashad Anderson. Young man on a roll of late. Good Beheim set of practice yesterday. He is the guy who worries us the most. He has been some step out performer in the games against Syracuse, both the one this year and the two last year, as the Huskies beat the national championship team twice last year. Didn't get a chance for that third game. Beat them in the semifinals of the Big East tournament. Matt Murray, three pointer. I tell you, rebound, Gordon. His lift is a lot better right now. Here again, beating the, the zone back. Anderson and lost the handle underneath, but that. McNamara to commit the foul. That's his second, his second foul. You know, look at Syracuse at this very time last year. If you're trying to figure out a possible team from the outside to win the championship, look at this, Billy. 12th in the nation last year at this time, nine in the RPI, and numbers that match exactly right now Providence. Absolutely. Good steal. McNamara. The racing out. Mikroski on the wing with the three. Had to look down, Jim, at his feet to see where he was in the three-point line, and that cost him. Blake Brown behind the back. Anderson was there on the spot. Holstefer with the pass inside. Oh, wrong! Gets the shot to go, and a foul. The 9 nothing run by the Huskies. Nice touch on the inside. Second foul on Warwick. Two on Warwick, two on McNamara. Look at this, going the other way. Hilton Armstrong. Get, give Connecticut a lot of credit right now, Jim. What they're doing is they are beating the 2-3 zone back down floor before Syracuse can set up. One of the best ways to beat the zone. Armstrong way too strong. And again, foul trouble miseries even in the early going here. Not even 61% for the team on the season. Big, big weakness for a team as good as Connecticut. Plus a point guard that's uh, just under 54%. To Leek Brown, a real area of concern that and the health of Mecca Okafor as they head in the March Madness a week away from Selection Sunday. Warwick draws the foul on Armstrong. Exactly, Jim, drew the foul. He knew he didn't have a good shot, put it right up in the face. Ways to beat the zone, Billy. Why don't you take us through it? Well, perimeter shooting obviously is one. Foul line penetration, that hasn't happened so much for Connecticut so far. Fast break the zone. That has been an area that they've been very good in. Offensive rebound, not bad. They called the foul on Armstrong, but they said it was not in the act of shooting. Man, I can't believe that because what Warwick did is create a shot even though he knew it wasn't going to be a good one. Armstrong should have his hands full here. Warwick. Well, you can hear him banging on the arms. I got the pace. Blocked. Blocked by Armstrong. Okafor with the outlet to Gordon. Gordon gives it up to Leek Brown, lays it in. Hutchins racing down that floor. Four on one against the zone. Just breaking the zone to death. Great hustle by the Huskies. Watch Gordon right here. Koprowski trying to defend. Gives it up. Syracuse has missed his last seven shots. Jim Nance, Billy Packer returning here in Syracuse. We've already given St. Joe's Billy a uh, number one seat, but you have eight schools for three spots as a one. Well, look at Kentucky, Mississippi State. Could you imagine them Sunday matching up for the SEC championship? Pittsburgh and Connecticut, the same kind of situation. 
you've got a, a Duke in a situation where they can make a run of ACC tournament. Here we are with nine teams possibly being in a position to be number one seeds. And we're in the last week of the regular season. Warwick will head back to the line. You don't believe uh, Duke off the win last night with its great RPI. You don't think they've already got it regardless well, well, of what they do in the ACC well, tournament? Let me ask you, let's suppose with that tournament being what it is, the semifinals are going to be four teams potentially that are all in the top 15. You know, you could go out in the semifinals and not play a bad game. As was evident last night in the Carolina game that they played on their home court. Second foul here on Armstrong. And Warwick at the line. I think Duke might already have a one. Stanford, though, you say not a one because if it loses its first Pac-10 game. Yeah, Pac-10 tournament coming up. You've got to figure that St. Joe's in the best position of any of those teams, along with Gonzaga, to win their postseason conference tournament. And I think Gonzaga really is still in a situation where they could sneak in there. Demetrius Nichols chasing down that second free throw. And again, the Orangemen have misfired on the last seven shots. McNamara back on the floor with the two fouls. So is Ford on the floor returning. Two on Warwick, though, two on McNamara. Brown really staying with McNamara, not getting him any looks on the inside. Good steal, and here goes the fast break again. And snaps it out of there and does Okafor. Anderson down court. McCroskey was back defending for the Orange. Lob pass fourth. Villanueva with the body. Pretty nice catch in traffic by fourth. McMahon doing a good job seeing him. Second foul on Villanueva. Josh Boone hasn't seen a lot of action here early, but he's coming back on the floor. Well, he got in the doghouse in the first minute of this game with poor defensive play on Warren. 21-16 Huskies. Hey, Billy, let's take a look at your bubble teams for the selection week coming up. Well, Maryland right there at the top of the list with that game against Virginia. Florida State, can uh, they have that kind of in-conference record and away from home and still get in? It's a possible. Richmond, a team coming on strong right there. Georgia, a team that's had some quality wins. How about that Michigan uh, situation, Jim? Uh, I think that they've got real problems now. They're going to have to make a big run in the Big Ten tournament. We'll be at the Big Ten tournament next weekend. Semis on Saturday. Selection Sunday will have the championship game, and there are a lot of teams that are pretty evenly matched and viewed upon I would think by the selection committee that be making a run through that tournament hope to make a run through that tournament to try to get another bid out of that conference. Yeah, it looks like very solid three teams in another steal and there goes the fast break. There's no two three zone here. Talik Brown with the steal and the basket. That's a 13 nothing run. And just about all of those points Jim beating the zone back down the court either a defensive play that creates it or off the fast break on a rebound. Terrific job by Connecticut. Syracuse would like to play you in a half court situation. Five on five with that zone. No convert. Yeah, he just cannot reach in. It's a shame to have to watch him play like this. Tie up called. And the arrow goes to the Huskies. With the conclusion of this game, we'll select the Chevrolet most viable player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund, a tradition for over 30 years. Jim, I'm going to make a statement here. I, you know, and I don't, I'm not a doctor no, nor know his condition, but with what's at stake coming up in the NCAA tournament, I really think that Connecticut, they've got nothing to lose if he doesn't play the rest of this ball game because you got the Big East tournament. They're going to have the same position, win or lose in this game. There's a throwaway. I, I think it'd be smart to just sit him down because he's, he's just a shell of himself. McNamara off on the three, but Ford keeps it alive. Wow. Ford, the Bulls are seeing out a fourth today. Unbelievable. Over four career coming in against Connecticut, and today he's lighting it up. They've gone almost six minutes without a basket. You know, also, uh, again, this, this, this back has been ailing for, for several months. And you might have to play a game or a, or two or maybe even a vital game in the NCAA tournament without him. He might learn how to play with that. Absolutely. Go the way with boom. Learn how to play together in a big game that means something. I will say this. This does mean something today. Now, it's not an NCAA tournament game, but it is for a share of the Big East crown in the regular season, which would be UConn's ninth and would be the all-time record in the league, moving them past Syracuse, which they share the record with right now. In the mix of the real world, that would mean nothing. 
And when you start talking about the share of the regular season biggies as opposed to having him healthy for the NCAA tournament, to me that would mean nothing. Base. McNamara three. Yes. And there, last week we talked about McNamara in the pit game not having good legs. Much more rested today. Great elevation. Nice looking jump shot. He's complaining to the referee that he got hit in the stomach after the shot. He's not getting much attention. That zone packing back in now. Everybody getting inside because Connecticut hasn't shown they can hit the jumpers. Gordon. And his first basket. He had missed his first four. In, in the first game, Connecticut was four for 22 from three. Syracuse four for 20. So neither team hit much from the outside. Connecticut got theirs off their defense and running against that against that zone. UConn held the uh, Orange to only 31 percent from the field in that blowout win at Hartford a month ago. Lob pass almost goes in for a three, <laughs> and it's going the other way with the whistle and the foul called on Josh Pace. That almost should have gone in, Jim, because fourth is zero for zero from three on the year. Had he made that one, it would have been one of those days you say it's all in the stars. Because it was right on target, just a little low of the trajectory. Impressive win by Kentucky today. Blowing out the Gators. And a turnover. Up ahead, McNamara. They won't get to him. Good job by McNamara throwing that ball ahead of himself so the shot blockers are taken out of the way. 26-23, Connecticut. Boy, some interesting runs here. Connecticut makes the good run. Syracuse comes right back in. The intensity that you said was lacking early has come alive. Yep. The fans are bringing them both into the ball game. Both of her bouncing it in for Boone. Tough pass, taken away. McNamara tries the head fake, draws the foul on Brown. Talik Brown. Got some teams that have been qualifying through the weekend, Billy, for the tournament, like East Tennessee State. Well, it's always interesting to see them come, start coming up on the boards. Princeton, the Ivy League champ, usually the first guy in the hunt comes the Ivy League because they don't have a postseason conference tournament. Murray State got in last night, beating Austin P. One and one here at the line for McNamara. It doesn't really matter as long as it's like two shots anyway. He's the uh, all-time free throw shooter in the Big East by percentage. But this year, he is number two in the league behind Ryan Gomes of Providence. So, so you're shooting 88 percent. You're number two. One point game here at Syracuse. Charlie Villanueva did not start the game. He came in about a minute in and scored 11 of the 13 bench points as the Huskies lead by one. And again, friends, Jim Nance, Billy Packer here in Syracuse. Good to have all of you with us here one week away from Selection Sunday on CBS. And both of these teams obviously are going to be in the NCAA tournament. And what about UConn's chances this year? Oh, Jim, I think that most people, in terms of their depth, their balance, the quality of play, assuming Okafor is the player that we know that he can be and that back's not a problem, I think most most coaches even around the country would say this is the team that's got the best shot to go all the way. They may be a team that's not even a number one seed however when it all starts. Coach Beheim yesterday at practice telling us that he believes not only will they win the championship but if they really get it going hope the first healthy it may not even be close. Well I'm not going to buy that one. Here's Anderson with a three. Pace plucks it out of the air. Again, those who have never seen Okafor play are, are watching a guy who is probably at 10 percent here today. That had been a rebound he not only would have captured, but would have put it right back up. Again, nice lift by McNamara. And Boone pulls it away for UConn. Okafor's only at, uh, attempted one shot, missed it. No blocks, and five rebounds. Second in the nation in rebounding, leading the country with almost five block shots a game. Nice job by Fourth down there defensively as the backstop on the inside. Boone inside, Fourth defending, and he's out of bounds. And that was just great defense by Fourth. 
He almost played in his zone area, Okafor, like it was a man-to-man -man situation. Then shifted over to get Boone, then was right in position under the basket. Can't play it any better than that as the middleman on the 2-3. Boone out, Shaman Tools comes in for the first time, a lockdown guy on defense for the Huskies. McNamara's open, three-point shot, yes, this time. It's kind of amazing how open he's getting, particularly with Brown out of the ball game. He's had some really good looks in his first half. Has 12 points. Young man who hit six in the first half against Kansas to set things up. What a shot by Gordon off the screen by Okafor. Yes, what a first half performance that was, that was down in New Orleans. Six of six, 18 points. understands what he can and cannot do. He's done a lot in this half. McNamara, this is an Okafor block situation. Oh, oh, it's fourth again. It's his day. He had 18 against Missouri, but he didn't play it any better than he's playing right now. He has 10 points. Anderson with the three. That'll quiet him. Different ways to attack the zone. Outside perimeter shooting. Anderson so explosive. Just a sophomore, Anderson has already got over 100 made threes in his two-year career. He had 26 points in 20 minutes against Virginia Tech. There's Okafor taking that one with authority. Gordon thought about pulling up for a three. Now. Flies it in. He was anticipating that to be a lob pass to, to Okafor, Okafor, but Okafor yep. just not in position to get there. He thought he might have been yep. setting up a little lob over the rim there. We've got Greg and Seth coming up with singular at the half scores and highlights, plus Clark Kellogg will join them for a little quiz on the NCAA tournament, and you'll get their answer to the singular one on one Billy Packer trivia challenge coming up on singular at the half. Let's see if McNamara tries to get himself free with Anderson on him. Warwick outside fourth. Is it still his day? You bet it is. <laughs> We're looking at a academic, all-American caliber young man who's having the game of his life in front of more people than have seen a college game in this arena ever, maybe. Shot clock is turned off. Look at how wide that zone is now, Jim. And that's what they worked on yesterday, spreading the seams of the zone. Now it's being played to play against the perimeter shot. Gordon launching a long one. There is time here to get off the shot. Pace. Pace. The runner. Here it is, McNamara. And will go to the locker room, all square at 32. In the first half, 32-32, we send it to New York and Greg Gumbel. CBS Sports College Basketball Coverage is sponsored by Kia Motors. Kia, make every mile count. Monster, will today be the day they say you were hired? Monster, today's the day. And by Autotrader.com. Sell your car fast on the ultimate automotive classified site. We are back here in Syracuse after a 32 all tie in the first half with the Huskies shooting 50% from the field. But the Orangemen snaring 11 offensive boards. 14 points off turnovers. And I tell you what, if you didn't know that Emeka Okafor, who's playing injured here today with that uh, back injury, stretching it out now on the UConn sideline. If you didn't know just coming in anything about the buildup or the talk about these teams, you'd think that 
Craig Forth might be one of the real stars of college basketball in this matchup right. today. He's got 12.7 well, <laughs> rebounds. Jim, in the first game, Okafor had 25 points, 11 rebounds, four blocks. So far today, zero points, five rebounds, and that's a reach, I think. You get to credit him with five and only one block. So a completely different player on the floor for Forth to play against, and that's taking nothing away from the outstanding job Forth did in that first half. UConn had a seven-point lead at one time. Syracuse with a big finish to the first half and they tried to lob it to Warwick to begin things. It was a set play that time and almost worked out fine. Renham way off the mark. There's the eighth rebound for fourth. Now in the first game Connecticut started off the second half scored 13 of the first 15 points scored in the second half. That's what blew that game open. And not going to be like that at the start of this one as Warwick gets the soft roll. Huskies did have a 13 point unanswered streak in that first half today. And this 2-3 zone now playing like an accordion. So far, unlike uh, Pittsburgh, and there's the first time we've oh, seen it today. And I know the first points of the day. I was just going to say, what Pittsburgh did so effectively against the zone last week is penetrate with the dribble, get it inside the foul line. Connecticut has not done that. So what happened is Syracuse said, if you're not going to do it, we're going to spread the zone out. Very good recognition by Connecticut on that play. Okafer out on the hedge move, not quick enough today to get back inside to help. And whistled for that one, his first. Who's in? Who's on the bubble? CBS Sports Line takes an in depth look at the 65 teams with the best chance of making the cut. Just click on projecting the field. CBSSportsLine.com. Well, fourth was calling for the lob. McNamara with a three pointer. He's got 15. Again, he's scoring today with his legs. Really getting up, elevating off the floor. Much better quickness. Little rest. Sometimes a shooter that has so much pressure on him as McNamara has had this year just needs to get healthy, get those legs springing again. And Brown breaking the zone. And Boone is held two by Nichols. Two times in a row, Brown recognizing that the zone is now being stretched to stop perimeter shooting. He sees the seam and gets it inside that zone. Good job by the senior. The senior now on target to break the all-time assist record in Connecticut's history. Got a chance for the single season mark as well, held by both Ali and Jerome Sheffer. Still UConn ball, 20 seconds on the shot clock. Thought it was pretty telling at the other end about not only Fourth's confidence today, but also the play of his uh, opponent, Mecca Okafor. He was really calling for the lob underneath. Fourth trying to hide out on the baseline. They may go back to that a little bit later. Well, Okafor looks a little bit more active right now than he did in the first half. But still a far cry from the super player that he is. Again, dribble penetration. Right off his fingertips, chased down. Nope, it's Syracuse ball. You remember the last game Okafor played in this building? I really don't. Who is oh, uh, yeah, I do. Against, yeah. Yeah. The final eight game, elite eight That's game against right. Maryland. Maryland. 2002 yep. regional championship. I, I was thinking, Jim, I'm, I went blank there because I'm thinking about Syracuse. That's the, no, that's the trick. That. Yeah. That was a very nice idea. And they didn't play here last year. Yep, Maryland on their way to a national crown. Beat in a very good ball game. Remember how well Butler played in that yeah, game? Yeah, Karan Butler was something else. There is McNamara just like the last one. He is really elevating with quickness off the floor. The follow-through has always been there, but now he's got his legs back. And being guarded by Khalid Brown is a fine defender. Brown. Both the first. He was holding with one hand. Let's see. They're going to call it on the other side, though, on Nichols. Okafor did have a little wraparound going. Craig Forth today. Playing like it's, uh, well, for him, senior day, but he's only a junior. It's, <laughs> he's really bringing it all out here. Now, I'll point out again, in his career prior to today, he was over four, had never scored a point against Connecticut. Whoa, take it away, Nichols. Pace away. Probably a pretty good job for Pace to keep that ball in his hand. Jim Calhoun doesn't like what he sees. 
And here we have Syracuse jumping out like Connecticut did against them in the other game. We got the largest lead of the game. It's Syracuse by eight. We're back in Syracuse and we have to say there are a lot of heavy hearts here at the Carrier Dome today and also for all of us who have ever had any kind of working relationship with the National Football League with the news uh, this morning the passing of the longtime NFL executive Val Pinchback passing away last night in Manhattan at the age of 73. He was a former sports information director here at Syracuse back in the 60s back in the days when Jim Beheim was playing for the Orangemen. Val Pinchback he was an incredible friend to so many people in sports broadcasting the liaison if you will the lieutenant to not only Pete Roselle but Paul Tagliabue as well and our hearts go out to the family of Val Pinchback. They just received the news here at Syracuse today just uh, before tip off not sure if Jim Beheim uh, heard the news Larry Kimball who succeeded Val here at at Syracuse was a great friend of uh, of Val's as well though. Holding a number of Syracuse folks this morning this afternoon early afternoon. Val Pinchback was 73. Jim what we have a little uh, meeting of the officials right now wanting to know if that ball actually hit anything and is there a possibility that uh, we could get some more time on the clock. It's 12 on the shot clock Billy. Here's what they're looking at. Did it touch? Yeah, I think it did. You know, uh, it certainly hit the net, and I think because you watch the rotation of the ball, I think it hit the I think it hit the rim as well. Watch the rotation. Yep. See how? Yep, yep. No question about it. Nice move by the official. That new 35, trying to slow down Syracuse here, right out of the locker room, and going the way, but follows it up. Tough block out situation. You talk about another way to beat the 2 3 zone. It's tough for them to block out on a missed shot like that. Going away, but does a nice job coming right down the guts. Anderson now on McNamara, who will look for some space and some screens to get open without the ball. And that one's a reset on the 35 with the kick. Syracuse again with a win would secure a first round bye in the Big East tournament this week at the Madison Square Garden. The move up as a four seed. A loss would put him in the 5 12 game on Wednesday against Georgetown. Four. They're pleading for him to take the shot here. McNamara, though, with a three. Too strong. Fourth tip. And Okafer with the rebound. He really didn't have that ball in his hands, Jim. You know, it was a tough catch on his part. Hard to have a good release in the shot when you don't make a good catch. Don't you get the sense that Villanueva is going to go ahead and take off offensively in this game? Well, they had, had that blaze start. Early. Yep. Yeah, no, most of those really early. Oh, Gordon and trying to get yep. too cute. They're going to call it on Gordon. Try to go behind the back, yep. and McNamara sees that moment. Gordon. Came back, committed the foul. He has a tendency to get a little cute. After a tie half, 10 4 at the start of the second. Beating that 2 3 zone, we talked about four ways to do it. Perimeter shooting, not there for Connecticut, they just 4 for 14. But offensive rebounding, we'll see right here exactly how it works. Tough situation to get a blockout technique on a missed shot. Shot goes up. Nobody there for the blockout inside position. Villanueva doesn't get any body on him. Goes right down the center for the putback. Hey, Billy, you've been speculating on all the number one seeds. We saw Clark and Seth at halftime, both saying maybe the fourth number one seed would be Mississippi State. How about for Connecticut? What's the formula for them to maybe get a one? Win this game today, march through the Big East tournament. I think that's the only way. I think they've got to win the rest of the way out to elevate themselves back into a position that looked like a lock. Early in earlier this year, a travel call. But Plessel needs some help. And, you know they got a Mississippi yeah. State going out maybe in the uh, semis or so of the SEC, uh, which is possible. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're talking about a deep league, number two ranked in the RPI in the country is the SEC. So it's not like automatically Mississippi State and Kentucky get the finals. Here's the zone, spread out, doing a good job on perimeter. Connecticut recognized early, and Brown was dri driving through it. 
He's not out there right now. Gordon, see if he can do the same. There's the drive. Oh, we're going to go right through there. Brown and a whistle first on the outside. And this is this is a subtle look thing that players have got to do. They've got to understand is Syracuse packing the two three in or are they spreading it out? And when they spread it out, you've got to take advantage with dribble penetration to get down inside. That's two on pace. Gordon playing the point. Going for that steal. Gordon, baseline floater. How about that elevation on that jump shot? Pretty didn't impressive. Even, didn't even worry about Nichols coming over. He's got size on him, just went right over the top of him. He has terrific vertical leap. Warwick going the wave on his back. Go right back in there. No whistle. Warwick lays it in. Good piece of officiating there. Merely a flop by Villanueva. Was taken to school. Warwick has 10. Syracuse by six. Has 10, was only one for five in that first half. Brent, Connecticut looking for dribble penetration. Get him Brown. Warwick says no. Officials say no as well. Whistle. Second tough call on Warwick today. Well, McNamara scored the game's first basket on a pass from fourth, and Denny's been lining up from the outside. Got the little breakaway in the steal as well. Found a favorite spot out there. Jim, prior to today against Connecticut, he was four for 24 career from three. Today, getting the good looks, beating Brown, sometimes coming off the corner. And then with that elevation, Berrien, 18 points. Good job on his part. All right, two for two at the line by Brown. Syracuse can't get another run, it doesn't look like right now. Connecticut hanging in there, even though Okafer is just a no factor in this game. Other than his presence on the floor and his leadership. Okafer now will come back in. McNamara, what a move. Tipped outside. Saved by Connecticut. Uh, a lot of banging of the bodies and no whistle. Much to the angst of the Orangeman faithful. Outside, Anderson too strong. And that's last touch by Okafer. Monday on CBS begins with Yes, Dear, and Still Standing. Then the Emmy Award winning Everybody Loves Raymond. The new hit Two and a Half Men. And Monday's number one drama CSI Miami plus The Late Show. David Letterman right here on America's Most Watched Network. No pressure on the ball by Connecticut. And that's allowing some of these passing lanes to open up. Given away with the body. That's three. Boone going to come in right now? What do you think? I think they're bringing Hilton Armstrong instead. Everybody healthy. Now, Talik Brown also will check in. UConn has a lot of weapons, a lot of bodies they can bring in. They do, and uh, Boone, uh, as we said, had a breakdown defensively right at the start of this game. He's not seen much time. He's had two outstanding games against Pitt, so you know he's not afraid to bang. Big screen. McNamara over Brown. And last touch by Syracuse. That was a good deflection that time by fourth, even though he didn't hang on to the ball because Connecticut had the possibility of having a good fast break there. So far, they have not been able to get their break going in this second half. Huskies trying to chip away. They were down eight a moment ago. And it's turned over. Great job by Pace. He saw that an unfamiliar ball handler is too far away from the basket in Armstrong and went and doubled down in the corner. Armstrong couldn't handle it. Pace hadn't been able to get that runner of his going here today. Nothing in this half. Gordon doing a pretty good job on it. A 
teamwork with two Huskies all over him. And Pace pulls it down. That first offensive rebound of the second half. Fourth jumper. And Okafor comes out with it. He had to stretch that back out for that one. Gordon on the run. Right in the arms of Gordon. Tie up first. No, foul. Foul called on fourth. Shows you again. There's Gordon at about six foot one. Going up over fourth to get that ball. Connecticut shooting only 27% in this half. Orangeman by four. CBS Sports College basketball coverage is sponsored by Mitsubishi Motors, makers of the all new 04 Gallant. Wake up and drive. ATT Wireless. Reach out on the wireless service America trusts. ATT Wireless. And by Michelob Ultra. Lose the carbs, not the taste. All right, we're back here at the Carrier Dome, Billy. Let me take a look at your Billy's uh, Bracket Busters. Well, these are the kind of teams you do not want to face if you're a high seed club in the NCAA tournament. Syracuse, we're seeing right now, Missouri, who may not even get in, but if they do, they'll be dangerous. Arizona, you know how they can explode. Georgia Tech that beat this Connecticut team. There's some clubs on there capable of winning maybe even four games in the NCAA tournament, Jim. We'll talk about Syracuse being a bracket buster. Beheim told us yesterday, don't sell this team short. I, we're going to be very confident going into the tournament this year. There's long arms to the Syracuse zone. Here's Armstrong with the pickup. You see, Syracuse doesn't go over in shade at all when Brown gets the ball. McNamara stays right over in his part of the zone. So Brown's got a dribble penetrate. Brown, nice shot. Well, you're talking about Syracuse as a bracket buster. I know they'd love to go to Buffalo. It's one of the first round sites, but when you're giving their, uh, their routing last year, they may, they may not. They, they kind of suspect that they won't be uh, afforded that same kind of Jim Bayhan easy travel not, this year. He did not like my comment that I thought that Pitt should have got the favorable advantage uh, last year. You know, I, I noticed a few people in the building today. <laughs> I've had something to say about it. There's that running one-hander by Pitt. Well, I, I think, Jim, when you talk back, hey, you've got to win six games to be the national champion. But sometimes things break your way. And last year, Pitt having to go out to uh, Milwaukee and Syracuse staying in the local, uh, I think, was a big, big advantage for him. Well, he made the point, Pitt, the year before, got to play at home the first week for two games. Hey, you right? think these coaches, <laughs> let me ask you a question. I think these coaches don't stay up late at night. <laughs> they always say, oh, we don't pay any attention to that. Jim knew the brackets better than we did. <laughs> Nichols turn around wide open. Good job. They do against a zone situation exactly what needs to be done against them. So from uh, bracket busters to a zone buster, what will Syracuse be in the tournament anyway? You're talking about them as somewhere around four or five, maybe? Probably. Brown in traffic outside to Denham Brown. On the run, too strong. He'll head to the line. Tonight, 60 minutes. Who is the man who dominates women's college basketball? I know this audience knows. Gino Ariyama. Tonight on 60 minutes. The story. Husky fans and the rest of America. Up close look. That's the third foul on Craig Ford. Brown again, known primarily as a jump shooter, doing a good job again. Connecticut getting used to the penetration inside this zone. One of their better free throw shooters, 78%. Hey, there's their uh, senior manager, Mark Butkovsky out of Bloomfield, Connecticut, who charts every free throw in practice. People say, hey, Jim Calhoun, how come your team shoots not even 61% from the free throw line? You guys ever practice free throws? They've shot 39,032 free throws, according to young Mark. Slipped that to me before the game today. In practice this year, officially, everyone chart. Jim, I'm going to make a parallel for golf. You hit a lot of golf balls. It doesn't make you perfect. It only makes no. you permanent. So that same thing can be true in regards to shooting foul shots. If you don't have good technique, no matter how many you shoot, you end up not making many. They've made over 31,000. They're shooting 80% in practice, but 60% in the game. But they're down two here to Syracuse. You're going to be hearing a lot about the RPI again this week, folks, as we get set for Selection Sunday. And Duke has the highest RPI right now after its win last night. This is why I think they're a one no matter what they do in the ACC tournament, Billy. Look at this. St. Joe's a two, and clearly going to be the one in East Rutherford Regional. 
They're going, by the way, again this year, if you haven't heard, there will be no East, West, South, Midwest brackets. It's going to be all based on the regional city. We'll be talking about the number one seed in East Rutherford, number one seed in Phoenix, on and on. St. Louis and Atlanta. Oka for that time, right in fourth space. Little help by Armstrong. The number one shot blocking team in the country is Connecticut, and Oka is the number one shot blocker. Chance to tie it here with a two. Brown almost looked like he was trying to lob it to Okafor. Well, you can see the, the inside presence of Okafor that normally would get that ball. He's not there today. Nichols with the three. Huge shot. Freshman from Barrington, Rhode Island. With five on the game, all in this half. Puts the Syracuse Orangemen up five at the nine-minute mark. Trying to deny the Huskies a piece of the Big East championship regular season title. The top 10 taking a look at the AP poll. Stanford with its first loss last night. St. Joe's goes into its conference tournament undefeated. Eddie Sutton incredible job at Oklahoma State. John Lucas his father was such a great player at Maryland. Transferred from Baylor Jim we, we never had to radar on Baylor last year but when you take in consideration three of their former players now starting and starring on other teams in the country how good would Baylor have been Lucas may be the player of the year in the Big 12 and it helped Mississippi State Oklahoma State former Baylor players Brown and Gordon I think the Connecticut's better served when Gordon's on a wing and Brown's in the middle just can't get there. Okafor stepped on the line and a turnover. Okafor just couldn't get there. No quickness in his step at all. I actually feel sorry for the young man. You know, I mean, he, he's staying out on the floor. I, I don't understand the reason why, but he is not productive at all. That back is really bothering him. Pace with the twist. There is that shot. Leader. And fourth right up over Okafor. Yep. His first basket of the second half. He has 14. And we may see him come out now. Jim Calhoun has gone a long time with Okafor. Going to bring in Boone. We don't know who for. Gordon too strong. Pace pulls it down. Crowd getting into it. Syracuse playing extremely well right now. Up seven looking for more. There's a rejection by Okafor. Saved by Denham Brown. Jim, that's what he does so well is he blocks other people's shots other than the man he's guarding. Oh, well, McNamara now with his third personal. Shot going up, soft, and fourth comes from the other side. Taps it in. Nobody putting a body on him. And the hit Okafer, of course, is fourth man. And it is Josh Boone. Boone for Okafor who will go to the bench but stand. We talked to Brown, Brown going after that season record of 212 of Kevin Ollie and Barry Shepard hold. One and one. And he struggles at the line he mightily. Does. Five, 53 percent. And Jim, one of the things that we always talk about in NCAA tournament games, that guy that's going to have the ball in his hands coming down that last two or three minutes, you really want him to be a great free throw shooter. And that is a weakness in Brown's game. Calmly hits two here. And they head to a break. Greg Fourth has a double double 14 points, 10 rebounds. Syracuse by five. McNamara's 18 leading Syracuse. Jim Nance, Billy Packer here courtside in Syracuse. What do you see here, Billy? Jim, field goal shooting percentage for Connecticut 43. In their wins, they shoot 50%. In their losses, they shoot 43%. They're right now shooting 43%. Right on the number. That includes 29% in this half. And Okafor still standing, but staying out of the game. Yeah, if nobody has ever seen this young man play prior to today, believe me, he is a great, great player. And uh, it is amazing that he's been able to just stay on the floor, but he is certainly nowhere near the guy that we have seen time and time again 
prove that he's the best player in the country. But even more impressive, great in the classroom. Academic All-America Player of the Year announced this week. Graduate in three years. Nichols made one a moment ago. Fourth for the offensive board. Ever present today has been fourth. Started this game with a bang and has stayed right there. It's probably his best all-around game. Boomer Wade should put a lot of pressure on him when he's got the ball that far away from the basket. Boom, trying to man up on Warwick, but Warwick beats him. That was a breakdown by no pressure on the ball outside by Boomer Wade. Seven-point game, seven minutes to go. The zone stays spread out to cut down the outside jump shots. Spin move to Leek Brown. Warwick with another rebound. The fourth is playing like Oklahoma. That's what I'm saying. If you hadn't seen it, either one of them play before today, you'd wonder which one's the All-America. Look at oh, this. McNamara just stole the ball. Largest lead of the game. It's now nine. All right, if you're Connecticut, Gordon has got the takeover. He plays very passively at times. Timeout, Connecticut. Watch this steal. Just a gutty play inside. Timeout on the floor. Coming out of that Connecticut timeout, and the Huskies with a win would share the Big East regular season title with Pittsburgh. They are a lock, though, as the two seed in their conference tournament this week, regardless of the outcome here. Syracuse with a win would be the four in the tournament and have a first day by a Jim, loss, and they would move back into the 5-12 game play towards that Wednesday. One of the most impressive games of the year for me was the way that Pitt came back after losing to this Syracuse team against Providence and the way that they handled Providence. I took a lot out of Providence based on what also happened yesterday. Providence playing very poorly. Anderson, three-point shot. By the way, if Syracuse doesn't win this game, and I've talked about it, they drop back into a, an extra game. That would put Boston College into the uh, first round by into the four-seed spot in the Big East tournament. BC that has very quietly had a solid year. Big shot right there by Rashad Anderson. Warwick lost it on the way in, but a whistle on the Huskies. Let's check the CBS Sportsline stat of the game, and it's what you talked about, Billy. Field goal percentage in this half. And that make by Anderson lifted him to 31% in the half. Complete game stats at CBSSportsline.com. That field goal shooting percentage, something that uh, Connecticut does extremely well in their winning games way down today. Villanueva with his fourth, he sits, and by the way, Okafor stays out, and he is now sitting. And I think finished, don't you? I would think that yep. means that's it. Now, this is good experience for the NCAA tournament run for the freshman Boone and Villanueva. They know that they've got to go out there without that Super All-American in the middle, see what they can do. And in this environment, I mean, yep. this is a tournament-like environment. Absolutely. Down six on the road at Syracuse with 31,000 plus on hand. Warwick going to get a little bit closer to the basket. He can take Armstrong. See if he posts back up. There he is. Gives it up. Nichols doesn't make the layup in between a lay-in and a dunk. Boy, that was a big play. Great job by Boone coming over to help out. Fourth foul on fourth. Well, you can't do it much better offensively than what Syracuse did there, but that was just a great play on Boone. Jim Beheim saying, what is going on? This is a perfect play by Syracuse, but watch this defensive play. Terrific job by Boone to rattle that thing out of there. And fourth with the foul, no question about that. Well, Jim Beheim has a question about that. Do you pull fourth out for a little while with four fouls and a no, six-point lead? Well, yeah, I'll tell you this. With a six-point lead, you, you're wanting to spread the court. You want your shooters and ball handlers on the floor. So I don't think it would be a bad idea to take him out. Syracuse over there with a staff made up all of Syracuse grads, the only 
staff like that in the country. Let's see if Bernie Fine uses that as a recommendation. Could be a one-on-one -on -one at the line for Denim Brown, who's made all four of his attempts in this half. Seventy-eight percent free throw shooter, second best on the club. Oh, not this time. His fourth with the rebound. Going to try to use a little clock here. Be in no hurry. What? Oh, he knows. He knows he can take on strong. He was begging for it. Yep. Connecticut may be a little bit down on the bench, a little bit too far down on the bench to handle this young man. No question, preseason All Big East. He will be All Big East, and. Uh, Certainly will have some All-American mentions as well. The man who came up with the shot block of the year last year to seal the championship for Syracuse. Have you ever seen a bigger block in a title game? Nope. With a second to go, Lee from the corner. And he came all the way over from the other side of the paint. Inside Armstrong. That cuts it to seven with 4.40 to go. Nice job by Gordon. He has to do more of that. He needs to take over games. He's capable physically of doing it. Come in now with the uh, 32,944, short of the all-time record, but the largest on-campus crowd this season in all college basketball. They thought they might set the all-time record today. Missed by a couple of hundred. Warren passed Armstrong again. Armstrong. No match whatsoever for Warwick. 17 for Warwick, 11 and a half. From the way, going to come back in the ball game now. See if he can slow Warwick down. Anderson, three. Inside, Boom is battling, and it falls over to the arms of Warwick. Somebody better get McNamara. He's got the jump shot available. Back outside he goes. Nichols, freshman. Warwick, tip. Denim Brown, here come the Huskies racing out. Got a four on two, right side, Anderson. He'll take the three, nope. He's not getting set, Jim, on many of his jump shots. They've been right in front of us, and every time he hasn't gone up square to the basket, and he's a good shooter. Foul. Gordon all over, pace, has his arms wrapped around him. This will bring Dylan away the back on the floor with four fouls. Pace, just a 41% free throw shooter. There's Warwick, step under. He's got great low post moves. Got a timeout on the floor. Yes, we can hear everybody. Some 32,900 strong. Syracuse with a nine-point lead has out-rebounded Connecticut, plus 10 here today. And you saw Mecca Okafor sitting on the bench, not even able to join his teammates in the uh, puddle during that timeout. Jim Nance, Billy Packer, and What's your strategy here, the last uh, three plus? Well, you know, I think if you're Connecticut, one of the things that you might start doing right now is pressing some. You've got good athletes, you've got a lot of quickness on the floor. You take fourth out of the game completely in Warwick and make Syracuse play a full court game. So far today, it's been played half court at a time. Syracuse obviously likes to play that way in their zone, but Connecticut has been very passive in their man to man. I think it's time now to start putting more pressure on the ball farther away from the basket if you're going to get back in this game in your Connecticut. Good solid screen by Warwick. McNamara couldn't take advantage of it. Wants to take off a little time here. Huskies defense have taken Hilton Armstrong out. They have Villanueva the back on the floor with the four. Josh Boone also down low. Pace brings it back out. See, with Pace the is not going to take. The, he's not going to take that jump shot, Jim. McNamara with five on the shot clock. And Villanueva boxed out for it. Pretty good defensive possession that time for Connecticut, but they have got to start pushing this ball a little bit more. They've been too patient. Gordon. Oh, there you go. Point shot brings it to six. Now they're picking up full court more. I think it's a real good idea by Connecticut. They need a lot more pressure on the ball. Gordon with an overplay. Anderson has the big responsibility. With McNamara. 
Green by Warwick. Green Help us off. Came yep. back over. Five on the shot clock. Warwick takes the baseline. Jumper! 19 on the game. That's huge. Eight point lead with two minutes to play. Jim, there's where the two freshmen didn't realize that they should have double teamed. Bill Vader just stood there and looked at Warwick. Jim Brown, two point shot. Chase down Anderson. Baseline jumper again, not set with the ball. Yep. You're right, Jim. Off balance with his jump shot. Foul from way out. I think it's going to be on four. I think so, too. That's going to be it. What a performance today. Best game of his career. His 98th game of his career at Syracuse. Started every single Everyone. one. Yep. Got the lineup here for you tonight on America's uh, number one network. All starts with 60 minutes. Again, Coach Ariyama is going to be profiled tonight on 60 minutes. Followed by the most watched new drama, Cold Case, and then the CBS world premiere Sunday night movie, The Survivor's Club. All here tonight on CBS America's most watched network. 14 points, a career high 13 rebounds. And he recognized right away that that All-American he was playing against was just a shell of himself and Ford took advantage of it today. McNeil checks in after Beheim grabbed him and said, hey, did you check in? And brought him back over and make sure it was official. No need for a technical foul right now. There's Okafer. In a three-possession game right here, so what Connecticut needs to do is to get out defensively playing much tougher full court. One and one, Denim Brown. Missed another front end. Amazing. And he's the second best behind Gordon, free throw shooter on this team. Malik Brown now on back. Reach in on Gordon. Good move right here. Jim, you want a 40% free throw shooter on that line. Anderson returns for UConn. You know, the problem, you put a 40% free throw shooter on the line and then you don't make the front ends of one-on-one -on -one yourself. So you don't get a chance to come back with points. One-on-one -on -one for pace. Oh, yes. There's a line drive. No arc on the ball whatsoever. And you don't get a roll if you don't have any arc. Down nine, Huskies desperate for a three. Gordon, high the shot, too strong. Anderson steps back up, he had a foot on the line. That's a three. Hold on there. Timeout here, Connecticut. Anderson, that toe may have been right on the line. But they're gonna count it. Uh, uh, I count that as what, a two then? 63-56, they gave it as a two. They are reviewing that last basket to see if it was a Two or a three. Well, uh, it's a tough one, isn't it, Jim? From that angle, hard to tell. Baseline official is clearly signaling two. Far side and official had an arm in the air. That view is but, obviously but, uh, inconclusive. I think the baseline official had a great look at it and made the call. Now watch the baseline official far right. That man. Two, he says. Yep, he's all over the call. Well done. That's Joe Lindsay. So seven point Syracuse lead with possession. 116 to go. Syracuse trying to close out the regular season with a five game win streak. No timeouts for the Huskies. This is a Syracuse team that's certainly hitting its stride at the right time. Snap Pitt's 40 game home win streak last Sunday. And now has a chance to beat the seventh ranked team in the country. Oh, they're going to extend the break here. 63-56, Syracuse. Back for the final 76 seconds. Syracuse trying to upend the UConn Huskies and spoil their opportunity to share the Big East regular season crown with Pittsburgh. You don't want to foul that man. No, Talik just reached in right away, so they'll send McNamara to the line. Jim, I always wonder, when you have plenty of timeouts like that, 
you look out on the floor and you say the one man we don't want to send to the line is McNamara. So why not double team him to make sure he doesn't touch the ball? Make it go to Pace, who's a 42% shooter, about 50% about of what this young man normally shoots from the line. Anyone else on the team you want to send to the line but this guy? Absolutely. So you double team him, no one will touch the ball. He made the big free throws against Pitt. Made only one field goal in that game and that big win at Pittsburgh a week ago but that was a huge three in overtime. Yeah, He was one for nine from the floor. Back to a nine point lead. They give Gordon some room and it's going away. Warwick reached in to force it. Jim Beheim told us yesterday he likes this team. Yep. Don't sell this team short. I'm very confident about this team going into the tournament. Jim, another thing right now. Remember last year in the championship game where McNamara in the game as it was winding down did not put himself in position to get fouled. Here he is, a year more experienced. He wants the ball in his hand. Good sign of a guy getting a little bit smarter as to how to play. Ten buses made the trip up from Scranton, Pennsylvania to be here for their star performer, their hero. Ten point lead, largest of the game. You know, there was talk a few weeks ago that maybe Syracuse was a bubble team. Now they move themselves up to a team that could be a bracket buster team. Well, they were in serious trouble where this season was going when they got blown out by UConn in the first matchup. That's it over the back on Anderson. Coming up, some of you will see Illinois and Ohio State, others Arizona State, Arizona, right here on CBS. Uh, Jim, talking about that, Syracuse lost their opener against Charlotte. Then they won 13 straight. Then they lost to Seton Hall, lost to Pittsburgh, had one win against Virginia Tech here at home, then lost at Connecticut and at Providence. Four losses in five games, and everybody said, hey, gee, this Pitt team, I mean, this Syracuse team in some trouble, but they're bouncing back nicely now. They're in a double bonus, so Pace gets one more. We've got the Chevy MVPs, Villanueva and McNamara. Chevrolet with a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. And we were talking about the looks on the Connecticut players' faces prior to this game while they were shooting around and getting ready. There just didn't seem to be a sense of urgency. And it really has shown as this game has been played. Slotted away by the senior on his last appearance on this floor, McNeil. Well, there are those who watch the Huskies all season long and say it's, it's as though they have been waiting for the NCAA tournament all year long. And that's sometimes a, a scary thing. Yep. You see that sometimes, and those teams never seem to perform when it counts, when they think they're going to turn it on. You're absolutely right, Jim. Syracuse, what a way to close out the regular season. Jim Beheim telling Menard not to shoot the ball. Now well, that's a shot clock <laughs> violation. Two seconds away from the celebration. And a couple of kids are wanting to storm the floor and they're already yeah. getting a little uh, warning here that might want to try to control it. You know, that this is something being way overdone here, you know. Well, they're coming out anyway. Yep. My goodness. We get the stampede here as Syracuse celebrates a 67-56 victory over the Connecticut Huskies. Broke open a tie game at the half, controlled the second. They move on to the Big East Tournament, the first round five. We'll see you next week for the Big Ten. Jim Nance, Billy Packer. This is the home of the NCAA Basketball Championship. <laughs>